And now, Chrysler presents Sneak Attack, starring Zachary Scott. The year, 1960. The place, a hospital room somewhere on foreign soil. Well, good morning. What's for breakfast? <laughs> I like the Dr. Morrow. This is a spirit we must admire in Americans. This young man jokes, though he has every reason in the world to be dead. <laughs> Name one. Well, we are. Rather, Dr. Marrow, he extracted five bullets from your legs. As a matter of fact, I do feel rather light. Thank you, Doctor. As a matter of fact, one of the best set-up doctors I've seen in a long time. <laughs> How do you feel? Ah, uh, strictly the clinical approach, huh? Is there any pain in your lower limbs? No, you did an A1 job, Doctor. As a matter of fact, I don't feel as if I had any. <laughs> you know, there for a moment I was afraid... I would to... hardly have been so brutal as to ask you how your legs feel if... <sighs> well, it doesn't matter. Well, I didn't mean to give you the impression that I lump all of you people together, but that, that guy that shot me last night, he that idiot... He was doing his job. You know, that interests me. You mean it's his job to shoot on sight anybody he sees wandering around this hospital? This hospital is not in the American zone. You were spying, Major Clinton. Father, you've been going through my pockets again. <laughs> no, no. Not I. The Colonel. Well, at any rate, this business is not my province. I'm in charge of the hospital. One of our intelligence officers undoubtedly will question you. Oh, by the way, Dr. Maroff takes care of this uh, hospital. Uh, you'll be in very good hands. I'll drop in to see you from time to time. Bye. Wait a minute, Doctor. I'm the modest type, also ticklish. They briefed you well, even to the so-called American sense of humor. They briefed me. May I come in, Doctor? Good morning, Major. Feeling better, I hope? Doctor, would I be permitted to have a few words with our American visitor? Of course, Colonel. I felt so sorry, Major, when I heard about your accident. But you see, you crossed the border without a pass and at night. Now, what are you looking for? Philosophically? Well, eternal peace. I hope that our countries could get together and iron out their difficulties without recourse to war. Come now, come now. You're spying, of course. What did you hope to find? Whatever you were trying to hide. <laughs> I think at present you would rather not talk. Huh? Oh, Colonel, you can't keep me a prisoner here. We're not at war. Oh, you are so right. You see, there is a problem. No doubt we uh, cannot keep you a prisoner. But we cannot move you either. Oh, it might be fatal to you and me. <laughs> but don't worry too much, Major. I will be back and we will talk some more. Huh? Yes? I'm lonely. I'm bored. I mean, my legs hurt something terrible. Tell me, where did you learn to speak such perfect English? Well, I was born in Boston. I went to Harvard. I'm not bragging, Stop but it. I... Don't take me for a fool, Major. Or whatever your rank is in our army. Tell me, why did our intelligence send you here? Your intelligence? Which one of us is suspect? Me? Dr. Kamras, the colonel? Are you kidding? So that's where all this double talk is coming from. You think I'm one of your own intelligence officers? My friend, if you were not one of us, you would now be dead. Oh, nurse. Nurse, I mean doctor.
Please, that hurts. Kind of late for a bed check, isn't it, Doctor? I'm not a very good artist. What did you hope to find? Please, the light. I'm not supposed to be here. Well? I'm sorry. I, I thought I might find on that paper something... I don't know, but something that might tell me who you are. Really are. You mean you still think I'm one of your own intelligence agents? Well, I thought there was something funny. A short-range machine gun blast and only two superficial leg wounds. Perhaps two. you're just lucky. Two? I thought you said you I... You can walk. You can walk right now, walk right out of here. Why did you tell them I was badly hurt? I thought it might be better if they didn't know you could walk. Don't expect a fast answer to that one. I happen to be on your side. It's that simple. Well, now, wait a minute. Let's backtrack a little. First, you tell me you think I'm one of your own agents. Now, why would your government take one of its own men, shoot him, and plant him here in this hospital? This is not ordinary hospital. That doesn't answer my question. Our government is working on a secret project a short distance from this room. A weapon... I don't know what, but something designed to bring your country to our feet. But we're not at war. Doesn't that make any difference? Remember your history, Major? Remember Pearl Harbor? You were not at war then either. Yes. Our government is working on a secret weapon for a sneak attack. And the weapon is right here in this hospital. You know it or suspect it or why would you be here? All right, sing it out, sister. What else do I know? Meet me halfway. If I am wrong about you, if you are after all... One of us, I'm as good as dead. But listen, listen. Get, get back in bed. Someone might come in. Okay, but tell me. You, why should you tell me about this weapon, its location? Why? For 15 years, ever since the end of the last war, many people in my country have lived with the dream that our propaganda was true. That it was your country that desired another war. Now my illusions are shattered. I don't pretend to know what goes on in your country, but at least I do know. My nation is ready for war. Imminent and horrible. But that's crazy. What? Why, why, should, why should that be? In another corner of the world, our corner, in American cities like New York, Boston, Chicago, Denver, Los Angeles, the skies were suddenly darkened by dozens of planes, planes bearing American markings, and yet alien, ominous, sweeping like giant birds to land on and dominate airfields in every major American city, planes without pilots, silent, sealed planes, guided by Robert. From? Yes, that was the question. Guided by Robert. From where? And for what terrible purpose? Yes? The Chief of Staff, Mr. President. Just send him right in. Secretary of Defense is here. No further calls. Uh, yes, General. Landed five more in the last half hour, Mr. President. That means that 25 robot-guided sealed airplanes are now sitting in major American cities. They're not our planes. We have no idea what's inside those ships, no idea who sent them, or have we? I prefer not to think that. Not now. Not when their ambassador left my chamber not over an hour ago. And talk to peace, no doubt. Settling our problems around the conference table. Yes, as a matter of fact, you did. <clears throat> General, would you outline your plans? We're taking the only step possible at this point. A chemical warfare detachment in Denver is attempting to bore through the hull of one of those planes. Only one? Only one. Let's wait and see what happens. Is there any way of neutralizing the planes? Neutralizing what? We don't know what's in them. Chemicals, bombs, what do we neutralize? Yes, that's quite true. Yes? Mr. President, radio from 10th Army Air Force Headquarters, Denver. The robot plane, sir, it blew up. How, how bad? Sir, it says, it says the entire city of Denver has been destroyed. Well, 
Well, after that, our own everyday problems may seem rather small, but you and I know that we still worry about them. But take a situation like this, for instance. My, I really look smart tonight. You may look smart, but you certainly don't act very bright. Oh, don't be so nasty. Just because I can't think of what to give Mother for Christmas. Well, you probably end up giving her the same old thing, just as you did last year, and the year before, and the year before that. Oh, don't be so superior. Why don't you make a suggestion? Well, I was just waiting for a chance. Now, here's something different in Christmas ideas. The new Chrysler watch band that features the jeweled look. Yes, this jeweled look gives any woman's watch new allure. So flirtation is the perfect name for these new Chrysler watch bands. Just look at these two genuine hand-carved cameos. See how beautifully Chrysler uses them to frame your watch. This is just one example of the Chrysler jeweled look. Imagine what such a flirtation band will do for any woman's watch. Isn't it lovely? Hm. Now let's get practical. Suppose she's washing dishes. Just slip these bands up out of the way. They're expansion bands. And all flotation bands are beautifully gift packaged, like this, to make a really stunning Christmas gift. Best of all, a flotation band costs only ten ninety-five, tax included. Less than many bands without jewels. So this Christmas make her watch look better than you, with Chrysler. And now, back to our story, Sneak Attack, starring Zachary Scott. The Cabinet and Congress are still in session. Denver, Colorado, leveled by the blast, is under a state of martial law. The city is a wasteland. 46,000 deaths, hundreds of thousands of injured. The homeless are uncountable. It has been concluded that it was the attempt to drill inside the plane's fuselage which set off the explosion. Meanwhile, the deadly planes sit on airfields in 25 of our major American cities, sit there ominously waiting, watching, untouchable, until the inevitable question is answered. Who sent them and why? Well, I thought I heard voices. I thought I should check. I'm sorry, Dr. Comras. I, as you did, I was passing by and I thought I would look in on the Major. Yes, quite all right, I understand. I won't insult your intelligence, Doctor. I, I don't know. There is no excuse for this kind of conduct. I suppose you will find it necessary to report to me. If you were thinking I would report to the Colonel, put it from your mind. <laughs> I find no sinister political implications in a kiss. <laughs> I would, however, keep my door open. And perhaps, Doctor, not overstay your visit. The Colonel is hardly so broad-minded. Was he bluffing? I don't think so. He is a man of science. Politics are not in his world. You mean he doesn't even know what's going on here? He knows the army has taken over the hospital and is working on some kind of secret project, but he hasn't the vaguest idea or interest in what it is. So long as they don't interfere with his work. You know, that kiss was smart thinking. Quick timing. Thank you. Now let's forget it. Mm, you're welcome. But I won't promise to forget it. I take it you trust me now, Major? I think I do. Good. I'm having lunch with the colonel and one of his aides. I should know more tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Fellow citizens, 19 years after Pearl Harbor, we are again faced with a treacherous attack. Five hours ago, Ambassador Chernoff handed me a note canceling our peace talks. The planes that sit idly in our airports are still another sneak attack. In this most critical moment of our nation's history. Major, please. Uh, what? Please, please be quiet. We have struck. Listen to me. 
This is a trick. It's all over the shortwave radio. The secret is out. We're too late. I didn't find out in time. Our warnings could do no good. Our planes had landed. Planes? So that was it. Sealed bomb planes. How, how did you know? On the shortwave, they said something like You that. asked me why I'd been snooping around. I knew that your country was working on a super heterodyne bomb. That bomb was supposed to have a central explosive unit. That means they could place those bombs anywhere in the world and explode them simultaneously from within your country. You mean it's here? It is right here, then. How much time have we got? Your country was given four hours to surrender or be blown apart. Four hours? Four hours from when? We have exactly one hour left. My shoes. Help me find my shoes. They were impounded with the rest of your clothes. But where? I don't remember. Let me think. The colonel, one of his aides took them, perhaps in the colonel's office. Listen to me. Get my right shoe. Get it, even if the colonel himself is wearing it. But get it. Yes, I will try. You try hard. Yes, I will. We're moving as many women and children as we can to safe areas. We'll evacuate everybody we can, and that's all we can do. Here are some figures, sir. Assuming that the blasts are comparable to the one in Denver, we've got to expect 15 million dead, 80% of our industries shattered, and 65% of our land leveled. We are well aware of that. Now, what are you trying to say? Well, these figures say it for me, Mr. President. We're powerless. Why, we can't even launch a counterattack. The moment one of our planes leaves the ground, they'll blast us to bits. Now, we can do nothing now but give up. Not while we're 55 minutes. And let us use it and use it well, gentlemen. Now, Fred, what about the Rentkin detectors? Well, we've been trying that for over 12 hours. The hull seems impervious to hard radiation. Professor Jenkins' delta waves still trying. That, so far, is our best bet. If it's a heterodyne bomb, and what else can it be, the delta waves should do the trick. But the professor has said it'll take over two more hours to neutralize those planes. And we have less than one hour. Have you asked their ambassador for an extension of time? That he would have to check with his government. Then I take it, sir... You mean to see this thing through to its last minute? What would you do? I told you, Mr. President. Why, they've got a gun at our back. The, if we attempt to move... The alternative, hand our country over to them. Live with a perpetual gun at our back. No, Mr. Secretary, I don't see that we have an alternative. You can't mean that, Mr. President. I think I do. Fifty-five minutes to doom. Fifty-five minutes to slavery. Be careful with the pivot over. I watch the door. What do you make of it, Fred? It's our cold, all right. It's unquestionably authentic. And if it is. General, let's be realistic. We have 15 minutes. Do you propose to sit back and, and hope that one of our agents behind enemy lines is in a position to stop them? Here is his message. Don't give up. That bomb sight, and we'll stop it. I know. How? Does he say how? And besides, the message was cut off suddenly in mid-sentence. Even if it is authentic, he's, he's stopped, thwarted as we are now. They'll only grant us that extension of time. Time. One hour. We can neutralize those planes. Are you sure of that? I'm certain. We've checked every possibility. It can only be that those planes are loaded with heterodyne bombs. The professor's delta wave machine is the perfect defense. In one hour, those waves will have broken up the molecular structure of the bombs and rendered them impotent. We can only stall them off for one hour. Yes? Ambassador Serna to the president of shortwave, sir. Put him on. Oh, sir, he said there was no need to talk to you, just a message. Yes? Quote, sir, no extension. Answer demanded by 7 p.m. your time. End quote, sir. Well? Mr. President, I implore you. Fred, that intelligence agent, what's his record? Oh, pretty average. Uh, Major Ray Clinton, North Bergen, New Jersey. Been with Army Intelligence for five years in Europe three. He's done some good work. Mr. President, you don't mean to tell me you're counting on one man to save the nation. I'm counting on nothing. We've done everything we can at this end. I said once I see no alternative. We can't hand the enemy our country.
You are indeed a charming looking couple, aren't you? Major, will you trust me that radio? Well, I take it you know by now, in a matter of five minutes, your country will be annexed to ours. I doubt that. Or be blown up. Well, that room isn't very well guarded, is it, Colonel? Hmm, how clever. So you found out about it, huh? Well, no matter. Doctor, would you stand there where I can see you? I like to look at your face. It is such a nice face. Now, oh, come on, relax, Colonel. Now, if my country's going to give up, we're going to be teammates. You might as well sit down, relax, we'll have a little chat, get acquainted. Who pulls the switch? Switch! <laughs> you seem to know quite a bit about our weapon. Where are you guessing? I know, it's my job, it's what brought me here. Tell me, Major. Well, it's no point in secrecy now. In four minutes, it's all over. One way or another. Tell me, Major. How did you get to this place? Fred, did you tell me that agent, this major, did you tell me that he's a good man? Yes, sir. He has a fair record. Colonel Thompson told me he did some pretty good work in Italy, headed up the intelligence unit in Naples. He was a newspaper reporter before he joined up. We've done everything humanly possible here. Fred, do you think there's a possibility that he... Does that clock make you anxious? We can easily help on that. Your legs, that must have hurt. Never mind, didn't do him any good. Get that fire, come with me. You stay here. No, no, we can help. All right. Either way, we're dead. Yes, either way. Here, take this. I've got to get in that room. Tell those guards that it's the Colonel's orders. Tell him I have to make a last minute appeal to the United States. What? It's past. Past. That's Major Clinton. I wonder. We've time now. Yes. Yes, we've time now. Time to answer still another sneak attack. 1941, 1960. When does it end? When will they realize that we've tasted liberty and prefer death to life on our knees? When will they realize that we want only peace and freedom? tale of tomorrow. Two weeks from tonight, look for The Invader, starring Eva Gabor and William Ives. And now, a final word from the Chrysler Kids. Jack Chrysler. Jack Chrysler. On my hand. On your hand. Initial just for me, and so it's my bag. It's your bag. It's Chrysler. It's Chrysler. For me too. For you too. Makes your watch look better than new. Quality, style, and value too. For the best bands in the land. It's Chrysler. Makes your watch look better than new. Makes it personal just for you. It's Chrysler.
by Larry Aldrich and Varden Petit. your watch look better than you with Chrysler's handsome Monte Cristo expansion watch band with a richly enameled crest. And ladies, see how Chrysler's new flirtation watch band adds jewel beauty to your watch. Remember, look for Jack Chrysler at your jeweler. It's the name that means quality in watch band. What was the new terror on the ocean floor? Join us two weeks from tonight when Chrysler brings you The Invader starring Eva Gabor and William Ive. Another adventure in Tales of Tomorrow. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.